Hello, everyone, and welcome to Teaching in Room 9. The reason shapes are everywhere we look. But we have a job. Now, go ahead and touch your throat right here and see how they feel. And say to ourselves, to be positive. Lemurs are found on the island of Madagascar. For one, and the numbers get bigger as we go across to the right. Reset, that means taking a deep breath. It may mean counting to 10. Today, we're going to start with a freestyle throat. So I'm going to put my up. All righty, are you ready to learn? Let's go! Welcome to Teaching in Room 9, the region's largest classroom. I am Dr. Sanders. In our new classroom, we can go anywhere and be anything. In our ever-changing space, we will engage and learn about different things in our community. But remember what I always say, it doesn't matter if you're two or 102, you will have some fun. F-U-N, fun. You will have some fun while learning. I work at the Adams Elementary in St. Louis Public Schools, and let's get this day started. I would like to get our day started by giving some shout outs to some of my friends. Kennedy, hi Kennedy. I hope you're doing well today. Let's spell Kennedy, capital K-E-N-N-E-D-Y. Hi Kennedy, my next name is Kevon. What's up Kevon, how you doing today? Let's spell Kevon, capital K-E apostrophe, capital V-O-N. Sit down, Kevon. Juliet, how are you? Are you smiling right now, Juliet? Hey, Juliet. Let's spell Juliet. Capital J U L I E T T E. Hey, Juliet. Amori. That's Amori. Let's spell Amori. Capital A M O R I E. Hey, Amori. So, are you ready? I am too. Let's get to learning. This is a test. For the next 60 seconds, this station will conduct a test. This is only a test. Just like at home, there will be times that you want to share your ideas and ask questions. But remember, yelling and waving won't do the trick with your teacher. Instead, raise your hand and sit quietly. That's the best way to get your teacher to call on you, polite and patient. Let's review today's lesson. Remember, when you have an idea or a question, raise your hand and sit quietly. Being polite gets you noticed in your class. So let's learn together and have fun while being respectful in our classroom. One, two. Hey there everyone, welcome to Teaching in Room 9. I'm Miss Williams. I teach here at sec teach second grade here at Confluence Academy Old North. Today I'm going to teach you all about repeating patterns. And math is one of my favorite subjects, so you're going to have a lot of fun. Did you know what a pattern is though? A pattern is something that repeats at least two times. Let me say that one more time. A pattern can be anything that repeats at least two times. So driving in the car with mom and dad, you look on the street, you see trees, flowers, they are all patterns. They repeat at least two times. You know, my favorite thing to do is to think of a chant. I always go, a pattern is something that repeats. A pattern is something that repeats. A pattern is something that repeats. And look at that, that repeated at least two times too. You can also use shapes to make a pattern. Can you guys tell me what shape this is? Yes, these are squares. 
What about <clears throat> these shapes? What shapes are these, class? Very nice. These are circles. We can use squares and circles to make a pattern. Can you guys look around your house and see where you can find some squares and circles? Maybe on the TV, maybe the clock on the wall. Find those squares and circles so we can make a pattern. Okay, you guys ready? Let's use these squares and circles to make a pattern. <clears throat> Here we go. Don't forget that a pattern is something that repeats. Let's repeat those shapes. We have square, circle, square, circle, square, circle, square. What will come next? Remember, a pattern is something that repeats. Yes, a circle. Our shape circle, shapes patterns are square, circle, square, circle, and it repeats each time. Look around your house. Did you find those squares and circles? You can make your own square circle pattern as well. Just like this, except just make sure you're repeating every time. We can also use colors. Around your house, can you see all the big different colors? Maybe your room is painted blue. Oh, maybe the bathroom is painted yellow. Let's use those colors to make another pattern. Are you guys ready? What color is this? This color is blue. What about this color? It's yellow, very good. We're gonna use these colors, blue and yellow, to make a pattern. Are you guys ready? Remember, a pattern is something that repeats. Let's repeat. After blue, yellow, we have again blue, what would come last? That's right, yellow. Let's look at our repeating pattern. Blue, yellow, blue, yellow. What would come next? Blue and yellow. No matter what, that blue, yellow has to repeat. Blue, yellow, blue, yellow, every single time. Did you see those patterns at your house? Did you find different colors to repeat? Good, I'm so glad. Not only can we use colors to make a pattern, we can also use sizes. Look around your room again. Find those big sizes, find those little sizes, find the medium sizes too. We can use those to make patterns. Take a look at these two sizes. We'd probably call this size maybe big. This one will be little. So we can use big and little, big, small, huge and tiny. Let's try big and small to make another pattern. You ready? Remember, a pattern is something that repeats. Let's repeat our sizes pattern. Here we go. Big, small. What comes next? <clears throat> big, small. If we keep repeating, what will be next, class? Big and then small. Let's try and make that pat size pattern together. You ready? Here we go. Big, small, big, small, big, small, and then big, small. Very good. Did you see those shapes in your house? Those sizes in your house? Can you make a size pattern by yourself too? You got big and small? maybe gigantic and tiny, maybe medium and little. You try that too. And make sure that you remember that that pattern is something that repeats. A pattern is something that repeats. So we had our shapes patterns. We repeated our what two shapes again? Yes, the square and the circle. It repeated each time. Let's make sure we remember it. Square, circle, square, Circle, square, circle, square, circle, yes. Then we had our colors pattern and we repeated two, at least two times. Blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue. What will be next? 
Yellow, that's right. Blue yellow is another great pattern. Our last one was our size pattern. We decided to use big and small. So let's see what we did again. Big, small, big, small, big. Last one will be small. We remember that a pattern is something that repeats. A pattern is something that repeats. So as you're going through your house, looking around for all these different shapes or colors or sizes, just remember your pattern has to repeat. Don't forget our chant. A pattern is something that repeats. A pattern is something that repeats. Okay, everyone, you did an amazing job. I can't wait to do the next math lesson with you. I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome back to our amazing classroom. It still looks good. You know what time it is? I got those shoes on. And it's time to do a little moving. Are you ready, everyone? Please stand up. Jump up and down 10 times. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we're going to do some big arm circles forward. So you're going to go big, big waves. Okay, you ready? We're going to do it for seven. Let's go forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, we're going um, to raise our shoulders for oh, oh, I'm, yeah, let's do it backwards, too. Here we go for six. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's raise our, raise our shoulders for seven. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, let's roll it out a little bit, right? That's right. And one more. Raise, you like raise the roof? Let's raise the roof for six. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Ooh, you all are breathing so hard. That's good for you. It's good for your heart and your mind. Let's sit down on three. One, two, three. Up, down, up, down. Sit right down on the ground or on the floor in your seat or on your table. No, don't sit on the table. All right. Uh, ooh. Are you ready for some more? All right, I'll see you in a bit. Have you ever been to the Missouri History Museum? Let's visit together. What will you see? Welcome to Missouri History Museum. How are you all doing today? Good. Okay, welcome to Missouri History Museum. Our motto here is find yourself here. And that is because we have history of our city. What city are we in right now? St. Louis. St. Louis. So we're gonna go up the stairs to our first exhibit and check it out, okay? Let's go. You can hold on to the rail to be safe. Let's go on up to the current. Welcome to Currents. This is our exhibit that we're gonna see our first part of the field trip. Are you ready to go see? Yeah. Yes. Okay, we're gonna see a special replica. Let's go around this corner. We're gonna go inside. Okay, now welcome. This is a replica, like a, a copy of a lady named Jeanette Forche. Can you say Jeanette Forche? Jeanette Forche. She was a free black woman here in St. Louis when it was founded in the 1700s. So there were black people who lived here in St. Louis who were free and some people who were enslaved, enslaved unfortunately. Now, after some time and after the Civil War, slavery was ended, okay? So we have a picture here of what's like the Emancipation Proclamation for Missouri. So emancipation is just a big word. Can you say emancipation? Emancipation. emancipation? emancipation means freedom, okay? So how do you think people felt after slavery was ended? What about black people? How do you think they felt? 
Yes, they were happy, Lawrence. They were happy, okay? So they were like, we get to work for money. We get to go to school and have an education. So we have a song here that we're gonna sing. Can you sing after me? Yes. <clears throat> Let's get our voices right. Go. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, it's called Freedom, Freedom, Jubilee. Okay, so you can repeat the line after me. Freedom, freedom, jubilee. Freedom, freedom, jubilee. Equality for you and me. Equality for you and me. Good. We have dreamed of victory. We have dreamed of victory. Right the wrongs of history. Right the wrongs of history. Freedom, freedom, jubilee. Equality for you and me. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Round of applause. Let's give a round of applause. Very good. Okay. Come with me in the, this exhibit, and we're gonna have a seat over here. Okay. Come on in. Come on in. Our chaperones too have a seat. Okay. So we're gonna talk about Josephine Baker. Can you say Josephine Baker? Josephine, Josephine Baker. Baker. Yes. She was famous for lots of things. She was a dancer. She became very famous in Paris, France. She was from North St. Louis, okay? So she became a singer, a dancer, an actress, a civil rights activist. She even marched with Martin Luther King Jr. Pretty cool, right? Yes. Can you say djembe? Djembe. Djembe. So we are going to practice our own drum circle. Can we do that? Yes. Yes, let's do that. Let's go like, let's try to do a little practice. Let's go just like one, two. Go. Can you go, let's do one, two, three, four. four. Let's do one big splat in the middle. Oh, very good. Very good. Round of applause for you. Round of applause. Good job. Welcome to Coloring STL. This is our architecture exhibit. We're gonna do some special coloring related for our field trip. Miss Julie's gonna give you some markers. You wanna get some markers so we can color? We're gonna come around here. Thank you for visiting the Missouri History Museum with us. What did you notice on our visit? Welcome back to our classroom. Yes, that's right. Our wildlife expert, Mr. Bear Hans Buren, has joined us again. And I wonder what he has for us today. Well, today we have an Asian forest scorpion. Asian forest scorpion? Okay. Yes, it's a very large scorpion. It doesn't look very large in your hand. Well, comparatively, <laughs> in St. Louis and the Missouri area, our scorpions are only about this big. Okay. Yeah. So this guy, though, he is a forest floor hunter. A for so. Not in the trees, mm -hmm. not at the top, mm -mm. not in the canopy level, nope. on the floor. On the floor. And he loves to search around and find insects, especially loves roaches. Oh, amazing, amazing. Um, what, uh, what, so you find them, what do you find them again? So you'll find them any of the Asian countries that have thick forest and rainforests. They love to get up underneath the leaf litter, you know, all the leaves that fall down out of the, the rainforest trees, and they'll hunt underneath there, specifically looking for different types of insects. Now, I see the scorpion, and I see he's moving around. Mm -hmm. What is that little swirly thing at the top of his, at the back of him, at the back of his tail? Well, this part right here is where his stinger is located. You see that really mm -hmm. sharp point right there? Oh, okay. And then that bulge right there is where the venom for the stinger is. Now, these particular species, is they're very docile. As a matter of fact, any of the scorpions that have very, very large pincers, okay. they typically have very weak venom. Okay. As a matter of fact, if he were to sting me, which I must say, he never has, uh, it would feel like a honeybee, perhaps. 
So docile means he's just real cool, right? Yeah, he's just chilled. He's just really cool. He's not too upset about anything. All right. And um, how many legs does he have? Well, these guys have eight legs total, two pinchers, and one stinger. Oh, oh, you think I can hold? Oh, a absolutely. Scorpion? Yeah, so this guy is very, very easy to hold. As a matter of fact, we'll just get him to crawl over to your hand. There you go. Now, you're not allergic to bee stings, are you? No, not at all. Oh, good. Some people are allergic to bee stings. And so if you're allergic to bee stings, you might be allergic to scorpions. Well, I'm glad I'm not allergic because I wouldn't be holding them right now. Yeah, now in the St. Louis area, Missouri area, we have a scorpion that's called the striped bark scorpion. It hurts. It stings a lot. So kids, if you see a scorpion, don't handle it like this because it's not friendly. That's why we have our wildlife expert handling them and showing me how to handle them. Yeah, you're doing a great job too. Well, well thank you, thank yeah. you. So they have little hooks on the end of each one of their legs. And so he can actually hang upside down and not fall off your arm. Okay, and I can feel them a little. I don't, they don't hurt, but I can actually feel them. Yeah, he's just kind of hooking in a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Now, because they have the very large pinchers and the very weak venom, they capture their prey by grabbing them. Okay. And, and they don't sting very often. All right, all right. Well, hmm. We only see scorpions in movies. I'm glad I got to handle one today. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the type of scorpion that you would see in movies because they're very easy to work with. All mm. right. And actually, if you wanted to keep one as a pet, they make pretty good pets. I, I like them because you can actually hold them. Yeah. But, I wouldn't be kissing on him. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think I would either. But he, he does like to be rubbed right here like this. Just like that? Mm hmm Go ahead. Now, boys and girls, do you want to kiss the scorpion? No. No. But let's thank Mr. Bearhands for being in our classroom today. I'll see you in a bit. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Hi, friends. Welcome back to Teaching in Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia. I'm a first grade teacher at the Soulard School. And here for Teaching in Room 9, this is our song time. It's important for us to sing songs together because it's a fun way to connect letters and sounds. This song is going to focus on the difference between letters, words, and then how those come together to make sentences. Words are made up of letters and sounds. They blend together to make a word. Words have meaning, then they then come together to form sentences that we can read and write. Nice job. Again, our song today focused on words and sentences and the difference between them. Kiss your brain, friends. See you next time. Bye. Now we have some fun facts about our scorpion. Yeah, scorpions are amazing creatures. Um, a fun fact about scorpions is the larger the pinchers, typically the weaker the venom. And that's because they use their pinchers to capture their prey and, and crush them and eat them. They also have eight legs, two pinchers and one stinger. And on the end of each of these legs, they have little hooks like for, for climbing and repelling. As a matter of fact, they can usually hang upside down with those little hooks. Oh. Yeah. They are insectivores, meaning they search out and hunt down insects. They specifically love cockroaches. And that's because they live in the floor of rainforest underneath the leaf litter. And there's a lot of species of cockroaches in that particular environment. They do have two sets of eyes. They've got a primary set of eyes and a secondary set of eyes. However, they don't use vision very much to see as much as to hunt by movement. So they see their prey moving, so they snap at it. And like all scorpions, they will glow underneath a black light. Ooh, glow in the dark scorpions. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for those fun facts. Great day. This is Candace with Chaos, and I want to introduce you to my friend, Kyra. Here's Kyra right here. Kyra is so cool. 
So Kyra is a person that loves to dance and she loves to sing and she kind of likes to make up choreography. Do you like to make up dances to songs that you like? I know that I do. And so Kyra also is a person that talks a lot. Kyra's a lot like I am. And so sometimes Kyra talks in class when Kyra's not supposed to. And sometimes Kyra talks over people when they're talking to her and that sometimes makes people frustrated with her. And so she gets corrected a lot especially in classrooms and different places in the community. And so Kyra wants people to be patient with her. Can you say patient? Patient stands for pause and think. Inhale, exhale, now talk or now tap out. And so when Kyra's having a hard time, Kyra has to think, is now a time for me to talk or do I need to tap out? And so we always tap out when we feel that we're going to say something that could be rude or mean to somebody or hurt somebody's feelings. So if we feel that that's going to happen when we speak, we always tap out and we come back at a different time. And when we tap out, you can be like Kyra and you can sing a song or you can make up some dance moves and then you can come back and deal with it a little bit later because it's absolutely okay for us to feel our feelings. Just sometimes we have to feel our feelings and come back and talk about them later. So I want you to try out the patient skill, let an adult know how it works out, and then we can come back and talk about it. Have a great day. Air hugs and Syra kisses. Did you have some fun today? I surely did. But now it's about that time for us to get out of room nine. But before we do that, let's spell our favorite word. What's our favorite word? Nine, let's spell nine. N-I-N-E, nine. Thank you for being in room nine, bye-bye. Teaching in Room 9 is supported in part by Know who to reach out to when you need help. There is hope. Call or text 988.